<laughs> Hello and welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 283. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. It is Monday, January the 11th of 2016. Mm. And um, <laughs> yeah, it finally got cold here. It got cold here too. Yeah. Let's define the word cold. <laughs> How cold is it there? Um, it's below freezing in the daytime. Okay. So it's, you know, between 10 and 30 degrees Fahrenheit at night. Okay. What's cold for you? <laughs> Down here. Cold today. It was 20 when I left the house at like 6 a.m. this morning. Yeah. So it's about the same. It, it was like... like 45 when I got in my car to come home. So, not terrible. Um, it's cracking me up because my kids think, like, one of them told me today, it's like Siberia outside. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, oh. You've never you lived in the North, baby. Adorable. <laughs> You've never had you to dig your car out so of 11 inches cute. of wet, packed snow. Yeah, seriously. And then they were telling me... Um, because I guess it's, I guess heaters in cars, like in older cars don't have working heaters for the most part. And um, a lot of my kids' parents drive older cars. And so they were telling me, my mom, my mom got this de-icer and she poured the whole bottle. Oh no. Of, it was like icy, like my car was coated with ice, but I actually bought a scraper um, off of Amazon like Last week, I was like, I better get a new scraper, because I don't know what happened to my mm -hmm. old one. It probably got left up north somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I last traveled north, so um, I don't know. I'm sure it's somewhere. It was one of the freebies from where um, we get our stuff for SSK, like the products they sent me. Oh, it was it? Yeah. <laughs> like, this is perfect. Now I have a mega scraper. Anyway, knitting. Would you like to go first, or would you like me to go first? Um, I can go ahead and go. I'm at the end of a row. Go for it. So I'm only knitting on two things actively right now. Those two sweaters that I started a month ago. I haven't touched them. It happens. Um, so one of the things I'm working on are some plain socks out of a sock blank from Gail's Art. This one was part of her um, first sock oh. blank club. The second one's up. There, where you can purchase mm -hmm. it. Yes. Um, the, you can go on our site, the www.thenickgirls with three L's.com. There's a, a link. You can click it and join her club. This yep. one was um, the and December. It shows you the ones. That... Yeah, it shows you what you'll get. Which is nice. Um, this is the December 25th, 2015 Special Snowflake. You are a special snowflake. Um, and I started the second one. I'm just on the ribbing. Cool. So I finished the first one um, yesterday. I've been on a marathon of watching Scrubs because it's funny oh, and silly and I don't have to pay attention to it. So this is the first one. I like the modeled appearance. I'm not a huge fan of... Um, I'm not as much of a fan as I thought I would be of the white, um, mm -hmm. but I do like the modeled appearance and how none of it's like planned out. It's just wherever it ended up, that's where it ended up. Yeah. I did a simple slip stitch heel. Um, did you knit this from the top or you're knitting them from the top, top down? Top down. Mm -hmm. I did a simple slip stitch heel, um, turned the heel, reduced back to 36. I do 72 stitch um, socks. So I finished the first one, and I'm, just, I'm working on the second. And then, uh, because I remember how awful um, scraping my car and shoveling snow is from last year, <laughs> which is a relatively new thing, because in Mississippi, you don't have to do that. Like, even if it's snowed, you still if don't have to snows, do that. no one expects you to go to work. Right. Even if it's like an inch, yeah. you're done. Like, or a quarter of an inch. There is no work to be had. Yeah. So you just, because they don't plow or salt or yeah. de-ice the roads, really. Mm -hmm. um, that service isn't available. So. They don't even have snow plows in the south. No. I mean, no. I never saw one until I was yeah. over 30 and moved here. So. Um, so there's no expectation for you to go into right. work when it's snowing out. So you don't have, you just wait for stuff to melt. Mm -hmm. 
And it's very rare that you get more than like four or five inches. Um, I don't think I've ever, well, I guess once since I've lived down here, there's been like. Yeah, it's, to... it's rare that you get that much. Yeah, once in 10 years. Um, so I decided to, to make some mittens because as much as I love wearing um, the fingerless mitts, they really don't keep the important parts warm. Not when you're shoveling. So, no. So I wanted to make some um, full mittens, and I wanted them to be made um, with the woolen yarn so it would hold the air um, in really well. Are you going to line them too? Probably not, because they're double thick already with it being stranded. Yeah. So um, I have some loft, uh, which is by Brooklyn Tweed. It's a fingering weight. Yeah. Um, and I decided to make these silly... Um, <laughs> Supernatural, the TV show themed mittens. Um, this little uh, star emblem here. Both boys, I say boys, both very delicious men have them <laughs> tattooed to to keep yourself from being possessed by demons Aww. or spirits or ghosts or whatever. So really, it's all in the name of safety. Um, <laughs> so you won't get possessed if you shovel the right. Snow? You know, you never know. Really, I just wanted something a little bit fun, but something that I really didn't have to think too much about. Like, I wanted a repeating pattern, and yeah. I kept going back and forth to end paper, because I've made end paper before paper. for Laura, Love and I but really like the look of it. That's right. They're what? Mine are mitts, not mittens. Yeah, they're mitts, but I mean, they could be pretty easily converted to mittens, but um, <laughs> I'm so lazy. The reason I didn't do those is because they're one of Uni Jang's patterns from way back and it's all just posted on a blog post so it's not like a document you can download yeah. it's like easily you know yes you could do copy and paste and make your own I was lazy so I didn't um, although I did change this has an afterthought thumb uh -huh. and I am not a fan of the way those sit on your hand so I changed that you added a gusset right? I added a gusset yes so these are the two colors um, of loft that I have. Oof. Sorry. I just bought more loft. I'm enjoying it. I, I have broken it once because I pulled too hard when I was trying to untangle. Um, and it's a woolen yarn, so I didn't expect it to be that. I have some yarn carries for Clip mm -hmm. Week. So I went kind of crazy last. So, and I had a $25 credit because I had spent too much money there in the past two years. <laughs> so. um, well, I have two colors. One is um, postcard. And that's this sort of um, Ooh, dusty color with pops of purple and pink in it. And then the second is Old World, which is this purpley color. Ooh, so pretty. I have these two to go together. And I am almost to the point, I'm like two rows away from starting to reduce for the top of the mitten. Top of the mitten. Cool. All right, I'm tangled here. Oh, I like the colors together. So this is what it looks like. Um, I'm almost done with that little silly emblem. And I just did a simple stripe pattern on the thumb. I didn't yeah. want to have to try to figure... Because the pattern itself is across so many stitches, it would have been yeah. difficult to see it anyway. So um, I did go up a needle size, so these are a little looser than the pattern calls for. Which I'm you kinda... knit tight, though, too. Yes, I, I do knit tightly. So I'm knitting them on U.S. size threes, and I intentionally made the arm very long because I didn't want it to be short. So The worst is when you get snow in between mm -hmm. your, like, mitten and the cuff of your jacket. Right. So it's really long. I want to say it's probably six inches from the beginning of the thumb down to the um, ribbing, the end of the ribbing. So I'm telling you now, do not make two, what is that, right-handed mitten? <laughs> Mirror them, yes. Yes. Them. Yeah, I do need to pay attention when I start increasing yeah. for the thumb gusset. <laughs> um, it's been pretty easy. I have a couple of times messed up the pattern and I've had to rip back a row or two, but they're pretty fun. They're pretty easy, and I like the plaid a lot. Um, yeah, I like how. I think from the like backside, you would never be able no. to tell that they were fan base. Nope, which is cool. Yeah, I like them, and they're a free pattern too, so I didn't have to pay anything for it. Oh, um. Yeah, so I like them. Um, I'm about to start decreasing, which is perfect because I'm hitting my pinky finger right here. So it's yeah. about time to start decreasing. Um, really enjoying it. I would be knitting on them now, except they involve reading a chart. And yeah. I've played that game before and lost. 
So I don't do that while I'm recording anymore. No one ever does that, <laughs> So that's what I'm working on. What cool. about you? Okay. I um, started... So I have Behind the Sun still in the needles. It did not get much love this week, if any love, so I'm not going to bother showing it. Um, it is a kit by Infinite Twist, but I am in the Harry Potter Knit and Crochet House Cup, and that will not count for this month. So it's going to go on the back burner probably till next month when um, I can use it for detention, or once I get through the stuff that I have to get through. So I am doing um, some Desert Vista Dye Work socks. And this is the Zombody It's Cold Outside uh, colorway. So it goes from like a green with lips of red to a gray to a red with purple and a bit of green to blue. And it repeats. I love her Zombody colorways. I do too. They're super cool. I get this at SSK uh, the first year she mended, I think. Mm -hmm. So I really, really am enjoying it. I'm knitting it on size zeros. Uh, 64 stitches, toe up. I am going to do a different heel from my regular heel. I'm not going to do an afterthought heel on these, and I'm not going to do a fish lips kiss heel. I'm going to try something new for our uh, new technique. Uh, craft all the things. Is it going to be a Laura Neal heel? I think it's going to be a Laura Neal heel. It's either going to be a Laura Neal heel, or it's going to be the garter short row heel from um, Lucy Neepy. That might be cool, especially in that... Um flecked yarn like that mm -hmm. so i think that might actually be what i go for so that is the first sock and it is living in my sloth bag <laughs> as you do from amy beth um i've got lots of yarn to knit and this is she's doing like a knit a sock a month club so i'm kind of gonna try to see how far i can get with that um so i'd love to get all 12 done like throughout the year because then you get a free skein of yarn that's pretty cool. Mm. Plus, Susan I... has always been... Susan of Desert Vista Dye Works is Super really great at appreciating her customers. Mm-hmm. And I have 13 skeins of yarn. Oh, wow. <laughs> of her yarn. Um, six of which are currently drying in my bathroom. Cause Humberto... And why would that be? Humberto is a naughty cat. So um, I pulled all these skeins of yarn out. And Thursday was kind of an insane day for me. We had a little bit of a family emergency. My mom ended up in the ER and had to get 16 staples in her head. And she, she got, is okay. We should preface fine. the story with <laughs> yeah, she's, she's okay. Fine. She was she's texting fine. the both of us. <laughs> she's fine. She's but playing, she was playing pickleball and got injured and, um, fell into some bleachers and cut open her head and didn't realize how bad it was, probably because she had a concussion. And she waited like two hours until <laughs> everything was another, over. She played another two hours. Oh, she played? I thought she just yes. sat there. Oh my <laughs> god. They played for another two hours and then my father texts me and he's like, "They, we might be, we might need to go to the doctor. Your mom has like a head wound. And I was like, Ooh. and I'm at work. I was like, I don't even know what y'all are doing. Um, but they, she was like, oh, it'll be fine. Because my mom has a very high pain tolerance. She's like, it's fine. We'll just put some butterfly bandages on it. And I convinced them that they needed to go to the ER. That head trauma is not something we like to fool around with. And so they went. And uh, she ended up with 16 staples in her head. <laughs> so anyway, Thursday was a little bit crazy. So I had that going on. I had basketball duty where I keep score for uh, middle school basketball at the same time which was interesting so I got home at like 9 30 at night and I'm trying to get my emails answered that I need to get answered um and pms on rav I was trying to get my inbox below 30 and it's into like five right now which <laughs> you want to know how many I have I don't want to know okay I know it's more than 100 I won't. is it more than 100 oh yes <laughs> But my Gmail is at zero. Oh, I have like 115 in Gmail. I'm much Any better at answering email than PMs. Yeah, I am too. Because um, I can do it at work and I can't do Rav at work. It's anyway. easy to do it on my phone, whereas Ravelry's mobile site is great. But like, it's not super practical to answer PMs. PMs are hard on Ravelry on the phone. Um, So I'm in here doing stuff and I like, I'm so tired. I just go to bed like around 11 o'clock at night. And Humberto got locked in the urn room. 
So it's my own fault. It's not his fault to some degree. Although there is all this floor space in here. <laughs> he had and, to pick somewhere cushy. And the one place he wanted to poop was on top of my Desert Vista Dye Works. And he didn't get it. I had actually moved half of them. Because I was like, I'm going to put these in a special storage place. Um, where I can see them and then pick where as I go. So I had moved like six of them already. I just had forgotten to move those other six. And he pooped on top of them. So now they have been washed okay and unless we think of a funnier name it's going to be called desert vista down oh that's so sad he's so naughty um so they've been that like and i didn't discover it till friday like because i heard him friday morning meowing and i was like crap he's in the knitting room so i let him out and i did not see or smell anything at that point and then i was like when i came home i was like man i gotta pick up that yarn and then i discovered <laughs> luckily i did not discover it by putting my hand into it because that's the worst way to discover poop but i don't know that so, there's a good way to discover it just seeing it on the floor is a good way of it's discovering less painful it. yeah not sure. stepping in it <laughs> Stepping in it might, stepping in bare feet might be the worst. Okay, I think we've reached our poo tolerance. What else yeah, are you knitting? Uh, Jessica right now is freaking out. <laughs> so that's the first thing that I'm knitting. Um, and the second thing that I'm knitting, I just cast on this afternoon, is I am participating in the um, Annie Light, Little Skin and the Big Wool, is doing um, a knit along for the um, Love of Spider Shawl by Melanie Burke. And she kits made up that included this super cute bag, and it's Charlotte's Web inspired. Love Charlotte's Web. Though it's like the saddest book ever. Yeah. So, I am... Oh my god, you can barely say you're knitting on that. I sit on a while. Like, it... I watched an episode of Gallivant and knit on it. It's not brand new, but it's not like, it's like 30 minutes worth of work. I had to redo the um, cast on, the garter tab cast on a couple of times because I didn't like how it was. I'm going to go out on a limb and just say I hate the garter tab cast on, period. Really? Not because, I mean, I think it's a good way to get that curve that you want to begin a shawl. I just well, so really just, hate doing it. Much. Yeah, it's not my favorite of uh, cast on. And this has, uh, so this is the... Um, Love of Spiders by Melanie Berg and it's Sunshine Yarns and it's got a really really interesting so you're increasing on both sides which is why it's kind of a rounded edge um, you increase in four spots on the front edge and then two on the back but um, instead of doing like make one right make one left on the purl side you make one purl wise right and make one purl wise left and I've never done that before so that was interesting um, my trick for remembering if something's make one right or make one left is I look at what my right hand needle is doing. If it's pointing to the left, to make one left. If it's pointing to the right, to make one right. So, does that make sense? Oh, like, so if you're knitting into, if you're knitting into the right, the front of a stitch, then your needle is pointing right. Mm -hmm. So it's a make one right. Right. If you're knitting into the back hmm. of the stitch, just make one left. I'm pretty sure that's accurate. I could just... I have to look, look that up every time. But you know I'm, what? I have no problem with Kitchener stitch. I never have I'm to look up Kitchener. I'm pretty sure that's correct. You might... If you're... Don't use me as a basis. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's correct. For entertainment so. purposes only. <laughs> I need disclaimers wherever I go. <laughs> I need, like, t-shirt disclaimers. That'd be awesome. Anyway, so this is the first. This is my color A. And then my color B is that dark blue. So I'm using gray and blue. Shocking. I'm going to look up make one right. Mm -hmm. um, so that is the, and that is being knit on size 5 needles on my signatures. My signatures that have not been eaten by my naughty cat because he is, like, taken to trying to bite the tips of signatures off so he has marked up some signatures because he is naughty and um that's all i'm working on right now i do have a finished object while leslie's looking that up i'll continue talking the majority of my knitting time this week has gone to these you're right it is 
Good job, dude. <laughs> if not, I'd be doing it wrong. And as long as you do <laughs> as long as you do it consistently play. wrong. So I finished the Regia socks. Wow. These are um, the Arnie and Carlos series one Regia socks. These are for Rebecca Ann. They are so big they don't fit on my sock blocker. Because she has ginormous. She has like size 11 and a half feet. So they are quite large. This is Christmas for next year. Done. Wow, look at you. And she won't remember because she has like, she, things going on. Yeah, like it'll be a year. So those are going up there and they're done. And that's detention for this month. Done for Harry Potter House Cup. So, uh, super excited about that. Those were knit on my size zeros that I'm knitting uh, Magic Loops. I knit these on. They have um, the Wendy Johnson. Now I'm going to pull them now. I have my gift pile over here. It's like a little bin. Um, they have the Wendy Johnson gusset heel. And you can find the numbers to make that your own on her website. But I like that gusset heel a good bit. So, I'm so excited that those are done. Like, and she loves, like, she asked... Oh, she saw me knitting them and said, those should be for me. So that is always. A is that good... all it takes? Because I can totally. Um, my brother-in-law, like when I called to tell my sister about my mom and her head trauma, um, my brother-in-law answered the phone and he's like, by the way, the socks that you knit me for Christmas are amazing. And then he talked about the heel fitting and everything for like five minutes. Wow. So he is super knit worthy. And now I kind of want to knit him like more socks and send those socks to them both right now so that they have warm feet. <laughs> but that is my only finish object. Not much to say about them. I did drop a stitch on the second one um, because the Steelers were up to shenanigans Saturday during the playoff game. And I dropped a stitch and then got three inches past it and did not realize. So I just put it on a safety pin and wove it in. I was going to drop down and fix it, but then I started to drop down and like, I was having to really, yeah, it gets it. real after a couple rows, it gets almost impossible. Like, eh, I'm not going to even bother with that. So finished objects. Yay. Christmas knitting for next year done. Yay. Well, one thing. So that's exciting. You finished something too, dude. I did. I was looking for that. Um, those Wendy Knits numbers to post a link, but I... I'll do it. Okay. Well, you're, you talk about yours and I'll do it. Um, so I did finish one thing that I've been knitting, trying to knit on. Um, I have been knitting on the Citron Grand and it is finished. Oh, it's so pretty. So this was out of a loop bump that was a single that I spun and then um, fold. So I... I basically set it as a single and set the twist so that it wouldn't um, unravel. Oh, it smells so good. I love soap. Um, this is Celebration. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's my favorite of the soap scents. I don't know that they make that anymore. I decided, I only got um, through the increase for the eighth section, so I still had two sections to go, and I'm so glad I ran out of yarn. <laughs> Um, cause I was sick of it and I decided to do a few rows of garter on the end to keep it from curling up. Um, I was going to do beads and then I was at the end and decided that I was just ready to bind off. So I think that's a good call. Um, it does flutter nicely. It's got a nice curve to it and, um, I like how it came out. It's not my colors, so I won't keep it. I've That's not decided pretty. yet what I'm going to do with it. It might be That's an really SSK lottery thing. Hmm. I don't know. But um, I'm happy with it. I would knit the pattern again, although I, I probably would knit it. Um, I would try to do X per day instead of trying to finish it in a few weeks. Uh, just because like, it's so... Once first. you get past like the fifth section, mm -hmm. it's just so many stitches on the needle. Oh, I'm sure. But, um... It looks amazing, though. Yeah, I'm happy with how it came out. It's just not, um, colors that I would typically wear, so... Yeah. Um, but that's it for me for finished objects. Okay. I have some... a, a wee bit of spinning. First off, what I'm spinning now is on the Shock Reeves, and how cute are these? These are pencil Rolex <laughs> from Wolfergie. I love those. And they look like... Pencils. Pencils. 
They're the best. So I started spinning these. I am going to Navajo ply them, I think. To keep the color sequence? Yes. So when you spin Rolex, it kind of creates like a little tornado. And you can see how it mm -hmm. kind of swirls out. So um, to keep the color sequence, I think that I'm going to um, end ply. Although they're not for me, they're for Eloise. But Eloise told me to do whatever makes me happy. <laughs> She's the best person to spin for. So I have four ounces of those that Eloise bought that I'm spinning for her. And those are on the Shock Reeves. Things that I finished this week. Um, I did finish the Clun Forest. Can't remember if I showed this. I don't know. I was in the middle of applying this last time. Yeah. So this is a fiber. It is um, a breed that's endangered. Kind of. Um, I can't remember what they call that. Not heritage breeds, but... They are, there's not many of them left. So this is Clun Forest. It was originally, I feel like, a meat sheep. I need to go back to my fleece and find I looked it up before I spun it, but I haven't gone back. Um, it had a nice lofty short staple. So I decided to long draw it and then ply it together. I've been over plying a little bit lately. So I did lose a little bit of the soft loftiness in this one to the plying. Um... But it's really, really pretty. And it was perfect to long draw. Awesome. So that's the first one. It does have a little bit of veg matter in it. And it came from Joanna Spring, who actually raises Clun Forest. Yes. Sheeps. Sheepies. So I have some of that, that that she sent that I've washed, but I haven't processed yet. So I'll... Oh, this was already in like a roving ball. Oh, okay. She sent me some raw because she knows that I enjoy yeah. cleaning it. Um, that smells good, too. So I've washed it, but I haven't processed yeah. it. Yeah, you'll have to play with it. And then also from Joanna Springs, I got a bat from her. And so this is lots of greens and blues and browns. And one of the prompts for Harry Potter House Cup this um, this month, they do different classes every month. And one of them is fan fiction mm -hmm. type things, like fandom stuff for muggle studies so i am going to turn this in for being inspired by the shire oh there you go Does that look very hobbitsy yes it looks like landscape which is yes what i think of so that's going um this was like 400 yards this was 250 i think this was a two ounce or a three ounce bat and then um i went ahead and plied this was way over applied I went ahead and plied the um, first three bobbins of the patchwork kit. That's from Hell so Yard. pretty. So I'm going to look. It's fingering weight. I'm going to look. It's a fingering weight three ply for fingering weight three ply blankets. And get That's started. That's really pretty. So um, I was originally going to do pop. Pop. Yeah. But I don't like fingering weight pops. I could still do it. They'd just be smaller squares. You could do hexes. That might happen. I could do hexes. I could do um, log cabin for sure. I could do the one that you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, again, Modern just crosses. squares. You so could there's do the Persian dreams one. Mm. But you would need a solid. Yeah. Well, I'm going to maybe combine it with a solid. I haven't decided. It might just end up being um, a log cabin just because. Simple. Yeah, it's simple. It's garter and it would flow out mm -hmm. really well I feel like so um that's gonna happen that'll probably be um a project for later on this year an owl or a newt or whatever I feel like so um that's gonna happen and then that is it for me that's like 300 yards there that's all I got so I um applied my fiber optic. Um, I did ply it from, I basically rewound the bobbins. Uh-huh. So that what was on so the outside. So how did you do that? I just put it on a lazy Kate and then ran it through the wheel again. Okay. Because I'm lazy. Um, I was just curious. It did match really well that way. Really? Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Now I need to do that all the time, I think. So um, it started with this super bright purple, and then it went into a darker 
purple almost black and then it went into a black and then it went to like a dark olive and then a lighter olive and then a bright green and because I did it that way um, mm -hmm. starting at this bright purple um, that sort of medium olive blended with oh, the yeah. um, bright olive and it it in such a way that it continued the gradient and didn't yeah. interrupt it so I'm really happy with how it came out I'll definitely do the rest of my gradients that way um, if I'm going to apply them and I ended up with 374 yards which is pretty good for me um, yeah. because I wasn't making a concerted effort to make it super thin uh -huh. it's two ply um, it hasn't been washed yet so it does have a little bit of a curl to it yeah a half, about a half twist um, I tied it in three places because I always tie it in three places because yep. I didn't always tie it in three places and now I do <laughs> <laughs> Um, you only need one of those schemes yes. that's terrible to be like, yep, three they, places. They, like, you keep them. walking away from it to come back with a fresh head, yeah. and after, like, the seventh time, you're just like, F this. There's no yarn I worth this. I will cut you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I it, will cut you yarn. It needs a bath, which I'll do after we record. I didn't want it to be sopping wet when I handled it. Yep. Um, Good plan. But I enjoyed it. Um, I have two more in my quote-unquote bin to spin this year yeah are you gonna get rid of are you gonna like front load that and do it now or i'll probably do, you... do every other until i'm done with it okay so i have to i think the next one that i'm gonna do is there's an odds and ends from into the world oh there are different shades of green so i might do that next i'll be fine what wheel are you gonna spin those on i don't know i haven't spun on the matchless lately i should spin on that you should so you've been spinning mostly on the mini. Yes, because I can spin in bed on the mini. Yep, that's a good plan. Um, we speaking of spinning, we have a book to review. It is the Practical Spinner's Guide to Wool. This is published by F and W or Interweave mm -hmm. Press. Um, it retails for twenty seven dollars in U S. thirty in Canada. It is by Kate Larson. Mm -hmm. I there are some aspects of this book that I think are redundant to some other books that I have. But there are some aspects in here I really, really like. I think that, um, so. it, again, to be up front, this was sent to us for review. Yes. I think that um, I like that it just sort of touches on most of everything. It just uh -huh. sort of gives you an idea of where, of the general overview of how things work without getting really into the nitty gritty. Because there are other books that get into the nitty gritty of different sections. Yeah. But this touches everything from... Um, how fiber is made on in the mills to where different sheep come from and then how to wash your wool and how to spin it and what you should knit it into and it, it touches on a lot of things but it's not in depth with any one particular thing so so it's divided into five different sections really the first section is wool and it goes into where it comes from mm -hmm. and what it looks like and um how it's measured so there's two primary yeah. um forms of measurement in in um essence of how it fine it is there's the micron count which is the more popular version and there's the bradford count which is based on like how much it would take to spin or how many skeins you could get out of a pound it's like all this math involved yeah. whereas micron count is a simple scientific measurement of the thickness of the um, diameter of the wool. And it goes into choosing a fleece and problems mm -hmm. with fleeces. But my favorite part is I am very into breed specific yarns and this does go into breed specific yarns. Mm -hmm. um, not to the detail that obviously things like the fleece and fiber source right. book does, but the difference between this is she has these sections in here and it talks about the breeders of that breed. Right. So, uh, family farm, typically in the United States, with their website, right, and how they chose their fleece, how they chose their sheep, and how they are genetically engineering those sheep to look for what what they're looking for right. as they breed, which I thought was really really fascinating, and that in fact is probably my favorite aspect of the book. And um, there's some familiar names in here, like Susan of Susan's Fiber mm -hmm. Shop. She's in here. Misty um, Mountain Farm is in here. Yeah, so there's some familiar names as well as some really um, interesting people. 
So it goes through a bunch of different breeds and hand spinners notes for those breeds. But I really think the most interesting thing in here are the breeders notes about yeah. what they're doing to improve the breed over time. And I like how each breeder tells you why they love their particular type of sheep. Um, mm -hmm. the, the story about the fin really um, resonated and she just talked about how overall it's just the greatest for this or that and how it's easy to clean and yeah. um, how they've tried all these things and fin is just their favorite. It, it, it puts a face on um, yes, the this industry. business. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then it goes into the section, the second section, which is from raw fleece to roll egg. One of my favorite parts of this is it actually shows you with pictures how to roll a fleece. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you really I don't remember seeing that in another resource. It could exist, but I don't remember seeing that in another book. And I thought I find that very interesting and in how to skirt. Yeah, and she sort shows your fleece. you um, different methods of skirting your fleece and how you can skirt it further if it hasn't been skirted far enough for you. Yeah, skirting is removing sections of the fleece, usually um, bits that are covered in tags or VM. Yep, and she goes into actually washing locks, how to use Margaret Stove's method of mm -hmm. individually washing locks, or how to wash them in um, unorganized small batches, which is what Leslie and I do. Mm -hmm. um, or if you want to keep the lock structure, you can, um, and it, it depends on how you plan on prepping them. If you yeah. plan on um, combing them, you really want to retain that lock structure. If you plan on carding them, it's not as important and you don't have to be quite as careful. And she doesn't go into every method, like the mm -hmm. suet method or the washing machine method are not touched on in here. She just really goes into those two, the lingerie bags and then the individual right. lock. I do like the fact that she does troubleshooting. So if wool is sticky after scouring, what you can do, right. white globs appear in wet fleece, what you can do. And if it actually gets felted, what she to do. She touches on pretty much every step from the point yep. that it from the sheep to the finished object. She doesn't give you um, super in-depth. This book would be a lot bigger if she did. Yes. But um, I think she gives you enough to let you pick your direction and study further in that. And yeah, if you want to, this is a good beginner book, mm -hmm. but also to put on the bookshelf, if you're more experienced, there's some things in here like the interviews or the how to roll fleeces that you don't really see um, very often there's also some history of hand carding and she goes into hand carding step by step a lot of photo instructions mm -hmm. how to handle the cards how to handle a flicker yep how to um, properly comb including yes. misting the locks which is something i hadn't heard of before that's safety first mm -hmm. <laughs> they're dangerous dude <laughs> they are very dangerous um how to blend color with non-wool fibers, blending with a hackle, mm -hmm. um, all the different tools that you can use from blending board to hackle to drum carter to picker, all that. Um, what to do if um, intentional processing with flood fleeces, what you can do to really still make a flood fleece a useful fleece. Right. And how different so, parts of the fleece are good for different... Yeah, like give belly you... wool gives you a lot more elasticity mm -hmm. and stretch and bounce than the back shoulder. Chapter three is working with prepared fibers. Yep, she talks about how to strip a bat, um, how to, if you um, get a long gradient like this, how to, like Laura was talking with her roll eggs earlier, how to stretch it out yes. so that you can I like spin it more idea. easily. That would be perfect for the into the world bats. Mm-hmm. Um, what roving, comb tops, pin draft and rovings, what all those are, but also what to look for with those, which is really interesting. I really liked the bit on the woolen mills. I always find yeah. that fascinating. Um, she just gives you a sort of taste of how wool is processed at the mills and the different machines that it goes through and how the wool is handled, how it's pin drafting roving is made, how, um, carded roving or comb droving is made it's very interesting um and again it just sort of touches on it it just sort of yep. gives you an idea of the process but it doesn't go into really deep detail 
Chapter four is spinning the wool. Mm -hmm. It demonstrates spinning worsted woolen and everything in between on both wheels, but also spindles, which is super helpful. And she uses um, several different wheels and spindles. Yep. Which is and she, useful. Yeah. She talks about troubleshooting in here as well. What to do if it's difficult to draft. Then it goes into plying mm -hmm. and how much twist to put in and ply structures. I thought that was a good visual of the different yeah. ply structures. Um, she talks about S and Z twist, which are sort of your basic um, bits of information on how to create your plied yarn. Yep, how to wind yarn on a knitty knotty into mm -hmm. a skein. I do like this comparison. Leslie was talking about washing earlier. Mm -hmm. So the floofier one, the puffier one has been washed. The other one has not. Yes, because you're... If you, especially if you've gotten a commercial, and I say commercial, um, a, a fiber that's been processed, that's been dyed and braided, and you bought it at a show or you bought it online, it's probably been it's in that covered. format for some point yeah. in time, um, because you know the dyers have to build up stock and all that. So when you, after you've spun it, once you wash it, it gives everything a chance to sort of relax and breathe, um, and be the yarn it wants to be. Um, yep. So it poofs out really nicely, usually. So one thing that bothers me about this book, and it's a very small criticism, is they have these projects throughout. Mm -hmm. And she talks about spinning for the projects, but I actually want to knit that project, and there's no pattern available. Oh, didn't she reference um, the book that it's the magazine is published it in? It might be published in another magazine. Yeah. But I'm greedy, yeah. and I want it right there in front of I me. I can see that. So that I have it, um, so she talks about sampling and stuff for it, but I want that right there in front of me so I can start knitting on it. Does that make sense? Yes. So that cowl is actually adapted from a shawl that she designed for Enchanted Knits magazines. So there's no real pattern for it, and I kind of wish there was. Um, if, that makes, if you're going to feature stuff like right. that, take the extra two pages and I can have see a pattern that. in there as well. Chapter five is living with wool. It goes through record keeping and storage and all the different things and like how to rodents and beetles and moss mm -hmm. and establishing quarantine areas and fumigating and temperature treatments and everything that you need to know if you have if disaster strikes. Right. In that way. So overall, really, and I don't think that's been referenced in a book really before i've seen it off and on but this is a really good reference for that for the storage and living with wool so really interesting book um lots of good parts about it great aspects of touching on yeah. every little aspect of working with wool great interviews with people who are in the industry now i always like that part so overall very enjoyable if you're a spinner definitely check it out maybe check it out of your library first and mm -hmm. then see if it would be of interest to you i would say if you're an experienced yeah. spinner there's probably not a whole lot um technique wise that you're going to um if that's assuming you don't already process wool and all that i think there's a lot of information in here but it is very high level so um this would be a good book to sort of get an idea of what you're interested in yeah. and then dive into other books from there so yes. it's a really it's kind great of like high-level overview. overview. Yeah. Um, for knitters, there's definitely, if you're interested in breed-specific yarns it definite, and how yarn is made, this might be worth checking out. I feel like there's other better books, though, if mm -hmm. you want to dive more into breed-specific yarn. So that is The Practical Spinner's Guide of Wool by Kate Larson. And that was sent to us by Interweave Press. It retails for $27 in the U.S., 30 Canadian. And um, it is actually available on Kindle Unlimited for free. Oh, so if you are a Kindle Unlimited person or you want to try that for 30 days, <laughs> it's available at least on that. I don't know if it's different. I would assume that it's different per um, country you're in, but it's on the U.S. one for free. Hmm. And that's linked in the show notes. All right. We have a question. And although it has my name in it, it's not just for me. Because even though Leslie does not care for pom poms, she has made more pom poms. I like pom poms, than I have. but I like pom poms in moderation. <laughs> Which 
is hilarious because Leslie is the person who pom poms the entire SSK a couple of years ago. That's why I'm at the moderation point now. <laughs> Um, so she's actually made a ton more pom-poms than I have. But this question is from Scrap Fair. She says this question is for Laura because Leslie doesn't like pom-poms. <laughs> Do you find if you buy a pom-pom maker, they turn out better? I've made a couple and they aren't as round or as chubby as I'd like. I have a pom-pom MV since you are Craftsy Affiliate Program and they have a sale. I used your link to purchase yarn for the bobble hat. I want to make sure I have a suitable pom-pom and I'm Hoping to debut this hat at Vogue Knitting Live. That means she'll be stocking Leslie. That's okay. Which is awesome. I want to, I need to make that hat. I really love that bobble hat. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. But, um, so pom-poms. The pom-pom maker, there are different people who make mm -hmm. pom-pom makers. Clover makes a bunch of different sizes. Um, they so are... Clover, I would say, is the one that we are most familiar mm -hmm. with. And they sell at a lot of big box stores like AC Moore, Michaels, Joanne Fabrics. I'm sure I'm forgetting a ton of other ones. You might be but... able to find them at like your Walmart. It just depends yeah, on you your craft section. You can definitely find them on Amazon.com because I've bought them there before. Um, so... The pom-pom makers are pretty cool in that they eliminate some of the workload for you. They are plastic. I wish I had some here. I should have grabbed them, but they're in my uh, bed. Yeah, I don't have any right here beside me. They're plastic, and you wrap around arms, and then you can pull apart the middle, and they come apart. Mm -hmm. You can always use a cardboard template. Um, I've seen tutorials on how to do pom-poms with forks. What gets you that... Uh, uh, I almost said Jared Flood. Stephen West has a pom-pom tutorial. On I how just to make linked it in the show notes. <laughs> I didn't even see that. It's pretty great, and he uses just crap he's got around the house. So, yeah. So, I think more than having the pom-pom maker, which is a great tool, and you can get them in, like, you know, Joanne sends out those 50% off coupons all the time. Mm -hmm. You can get them fairly inexpensive in all sizes, is patience. You have to have patience to continually wrap and wrap and wrap. And that's what makes a big fluffy pom-pom mm -hmm. is continually wrapping, not getting bored halfway through. Someone just opened the door. Not getting bored halfway through and deciding to stop making your pom-pom. Pawning it off on other people who have to yeah. be sitting near you. Hello, yep. Alberto. Hey, guess he's tearing stuff up. The pom-pom <laughs> makers make it easier, but... You can do it and do it without buying any special tools. Yep. Um, for sure. They just make it easier to make the pom-pom. He's such a pretty boy. He is pretty. He's kind of a jerk, but he's really <laughs> there's, pretty. There's no kind of about it. He's about to leap on top of the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he's definitely a jerk now that he can turn on the water faucet. Um, hmm. Yeah, he can turn on my kitchen water faucet and get himself water whenever he wants, which means I have to rubber band my water faucet. <laughs> <laughs> I leave for work every morning. <laughs> Welcome to my life. Wow. It only took him 14 years to learn that trick. Okay, now he's rubbing his head on the thing. Anyway, um, get over here. Come with me. Stop being a jerk. Um, he's like, I am getting off you so I can jump <laughs> around, lady. Anyway, um... And tear up your furniture. Pom-pom makers. Awesome. Can totally do it without pom-pom makers. Just have patience. And that's what makes the awesome pom-poms are the people who have patience. I think that's it. Was there also, something else? you should go and watch Stephen West's pom-pom video. It's linked in the show notes. <laughs> you should. You totally We're should. We're not affiliated with Stephen West in any way, but <laughs> his but videos are funny. I mean, you gotta give him credit. Oh, yeah. They're hilarious. Um... And he was wearing, like, David Bowie-style pants the other day. Oh, so, don't say David Bowie. Mm -hmm. I'm going to watch Labyrinth later. And David Bowie tribute for him. Oh, anyway. So what have um, you been reading? I've been reading... Well, I've been watching Gallivant, which... Have you watched Gallivant yet? Oh, so Gallivant is a show on ABC. And it is a night... And it's kind of, it's got the guy from Psych, like the police detective, who's kind of a jerk. Timothy, uh, whatever. I anyway, I don't know him, if you yeah. know Psych. Okay, 
So he's like this evil king. And in the first season, it was only like 10 episodes long or eight episodes long. And they're 30 minute episodes. Um, he steals like Gallivant's love away and like Gallivant goes after him. So it's like a knight in shining armor. What makes it incredibly awesome is it, they got like some of the Disney people to do the music for it because it's a musical. But it's a hilarious musical. Hmm. So um, season two just started and they did for like 10 episodes and I have to look up the name of the first. That first episode's name is like, ha, you thought we got canceled or something like that. <laughs> it is hilarious. Um, and the music's really like clever, but um, it's really, really good. So um, the people who do the music, and there's hot guys who take off their shirts. Oh, quite it's always good for me. Um, but you'll have to try to get like season one and then season two just started. Um, so season two, that long. it's hilarious. Uh, new season, AKA suck it cancellation bear. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first episode. And, like, the first song, they start singing, like, the original song from season one, and they're like, oh, that didn't win us any Emmys. Here we go. <laughs> like, go into, like, a whole new musical number. It's very um, tongue-in-cheek. So they end up in West Hollywood, and, um, like, they end up in a gay bar, which is hilarious, too. Hence the bear. Hmm. But it's very, very funny. Um the first season was hilarious, very tongue-in-cheek, and the music is splendiferous. So that's Gallivant, and I've been watching that. Um, I'm listening to the second Charlie Davidson book in the series. Still, I'm like mm, six hours in out of nine. I just finished reading the first two books in the Black Blade series by Jennifer Estep. Um, she's known for some of her adult stuff, but she also writes kids' books. Uh, she wrote First Frost, which was the Mythos series. That series has like seven books in it. They were decent. I think I get, I love Percy Jackson so much. Anything else that has to do with mythology, I'm like, mm, okay. Like, that's the bar that I hold people yeah. up to. Um, so, but she's got a new series, the Black Blade series. It's got two books in it. The third book comes out in April. It is about a teenager who um, has been kind of in and out of foster homes, living on her own. She's a thief. Her mom was killed. And it takes place in this area where it's kind of like Disneyland, but it's run by different mob bosses. Hmm. And magic is real. And um, she ends up saving, like, one of the main family's sons. She didn't want to get involved, but she ends up saving his life, and that draws attention to her. And um, it goes into, it's got some really good plot. So I've read the first two of those, cannot wait for the third. And then at work, I'm reading um, Magnus Chase, the new Rick Reardon series, which is instead of Greek or Roman mythology or Egyptian mythology, this one is Viking Norse gods. So it's interesting. It's got Annabeth's cousin in it who looks like Kurt Cobain from Nirvana. They go into that quite a bit. Um, yeah, I, I like find... that you had to, like, qualify Kurt Cobain <laughs> from Nirvana. Well, some people don't know. I know. <laughs> it's been a long time, dude. 94. I know. My kids don't remember. Because it was 20-something years ago. They weren't alive. I know. <laughs> My oldest child that I teach was born in 98. So, <sighs> it's been a while. Um, yeah. So, they were not alive. Um... So Magnus Chase, really good so far. I find Norse mythology a little bit, it's weird. Like, I'm so used to Greek and Roman mythology, and Norse mythology has some weird, because they add, like, ice giants. So, luckily, I read a lot of Alana Andrews. I was going to say, ice giant makes me think of that rich guy in Alana Andrews. And Alana Andrews has some Norse mythology in her. And then um, there's a series by another romance person who goes into Norse mythology. So I have, like, some background in Norse mythology. Like, I know a little bit of Norse mythology, but um, North Norse mythology is complicated and interesting. 
and there's like rainbow bridges and trees of life that's protected by giant yeah yard gristle i can yeah it starts with a y yeah yes and uh in the book that's in the make the way to get into it is the make way for docklings statue in boston so this one takes place in boston um so it's interesting i do so things that i really really like about the book is um there's a main character who looks like kurt cobain but his main sidekick is muslim and I like that there's a little bit more diversity there. And his other sidekicks, one of them is deaf. And they go into um, American Sign Language a little bit. So it's not just your standard... Yeah, that's nice. Um, ...white boy heroes right. in this one. Um, so I did like that. And it goes into a little bit of like arranged marriages and some cultural things, too. Which is interesting. Um, that is not Norse mythology. So I think the background characters for this, the secondary characters, kind of make it for me versus the plot line. Because the plot line, I mean, it's another almost like lightning thief plot line. Like, there's only so many things right. you can do with a quest. But if you have kids that already love Recruit and stuff, definitely check it out. A little bit different. Um, not as good as Lightning Thief, not as bad as Red Pyramid series. Red Pyramid series was pretty terrible. So, for me, I don't know. Other people might have liked it better. Um, I'm definitely like a Greek mythology girl. And so, Egyptian mythology did not do it for me. And that's what Red Pyramid is. But he was, when I saw him speak in person, he was a really interesting dude because he's like, everyone can relate with stories and mythology to some degree. Like, there's action and there's heroes and there's love and there's forbidden love and there's something in mythology that you can relate with. So, you know, he was an interest. he's an interesting dude. Um, what are you reading? Nothing I'm going to own up to. Um, a bunch of, I hesitate to even really call them romancy things. They're <laughs> smut. Smut. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not going to give you names. Of okay. Books. So back to me. Um, there have been, I think I recommended both these books in the past. The War That Saved My Life, we talked about mm -hmm. before. That won the Newbery Honor this year. Newbery Awards, the ALA Awards uh, were talked about. They were, I don't know. Announced. Out, announced. Thank you. Announced today. Um, there was also a roller derby book that I talked about in the past mm -hmm. that was a graphic novel that also got a Newbery Honor. I did not predict the Newberry correctly because it is a picture book. So <laughs> it was it was like not a book that I had been exposed to, but it looks really, really good. And then the Coretta Scott King winner was, um, I think we've talked before about, um, oh, no, I'm not, I'm not going to remember the name of the first one, but it was like Gone Crazy in Alabama, the third in a series. That's really good. But anyway, you can look all those if you just Google ALA Awards 2016. All of them will pop up. But I really liked War That Saved My Life, and I was super excited that got honored. Cool. And then Echo was the other Newberry honor, but I haven't read that one. Because um, it, it's a time travel -y kind of thing. So, not really, but kind of. Nope. Oh. Humberto's left us. <laughs> We're not entertaining enough. Apparently not. Um, things that are upcoming, DFW. Actually, my mom called me this morning and she's like, I need you to lay out your schedule for me for the next two months. <laughs> so um, I will be teaching in Chicago, Illinois at some point, either in February or March. We are still narrowing down dates. That will be at String Theory. Uh, Leslie and I will be going to Oregon. To mm -hmm. get at locations sometime in March um, for a second retreat. I will be at DFW Fiber Festival the first weekend in April with my friend Renee. Leslie should come too, but she's not. I would love to, but I'll have just come back from a trip in March. Plus, there's yeah. possible shenanigans happening in our household, so um, yeah. I will need to save PTO time and money. There you go. Uh, Leslie will be at Vogue Knitting Live, which is in, what, a week? It's Two this weeks? weekend. 
Oh, you're going to have so much fun. Yes, Michael um, left this morning to go to Las Vegas, and he comes back super late Friday night, and then I'll leave him uh, Monday, or Saturday morning. I think Jill Draper is going to be there. I should look at their list. And yeah, see they have quite a few more. interesting vendors this year that I'm going to check out. Um, I'm only in New York for the day, and really only for about eight hours, um, and then I hop a train and come back home. That'll be fun, though. Yeah, I think so. We will both be at Maryland Sheep and Wool, which will be in May. First weekend of May, always. Yep, always. We are, as of right now, planning on attending TNNA, which will be in D.C. this yeah, year. it's in D.C. It's in um, late May or June. I can't remember. Yep. We will have SSK in the summer. I will be in Boston a week and a half before SSK, probably. Oh, is that your yeah. teacher thing? Yeah, I'll be at the ILA convention, hopefully. Mm. It just depends if work's going to pay for it or not. But that will be fun because I might be able to see our friend Alicia. Yeah. And her new baby. June. Who will be like... Who was born in December. <laughs> She's born on Christmas. Um, then we both plan on attending Rhinebeck. Um, I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything in the meantime. And I'll probably go to SAF again next year, too. Depending on when it is in regards to Rhinebeck. So that is what our year is looking at. Like, is there any other events that you're thinking about going to that we need to add in? No, not yet. Um, not really. I, I, there's a bunch of balls in the air here and until those balls settle, <laughs> yeah, I keep saying balls, <laughs> um, then it, I can't really plan for anything. Yeah. So, um, we'll see. It is what and it no, is. And no, I'm not pregnant before anybody asks me <laughs> And you've already gotten married, so that's all Yes, the good gracious. <laughs> We should still probably be able to do TNNA just for the weekend. Oh, yeah. That's because that's just a three-hour drive for me. So Yeah, that's pretty close for you. Um, trying to think what else. We have, oh, we have a giveaway. So yes. we have an infinite twist giveaway. Um, it is for this lovely kit. The Behind the Sun kit. Behind the Sun kit. Yeah. And you will win this gorgeous kit in green. Unless Liz going to ask me for numbers and I'm super not prepared. Oh, and IMDB just made my thing fizzle. Um, 374 is the highest number. Okay, so between the number 2 and 374. I'm going to go ahead and unlock it real fast. 374. Oh, not 5. 4. Okay. So I haven't pushed the button. But I'm going to push the button. button. 68, which should be on the third page. Third page. 68 is... Mamie! Who loves the pop twizzle kit. And that's Mary from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Yeah, she came to SSK last year, she I think. She did. Mm -hmm. I think so. So, Mamie, uh, go ahead and contact me, Lala, on Ravelry, or you can shoot me an email at laura at the .com, and I will send this your way. I just need your real name and your address. Um, other things to give away. Are you ready? I am. Show it to me, baby. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I have to undo it. Um, so, another crafty girl. I had ordered some yarn from her, because Hello, she's got rainbow bricks on her waist. You ordered yarn? From, from another crafty girl. Hockey? <laughs> but she's got rainbow bright color ways, yo. She has some really great colors. She does. So she sent two skeins, one of which we're going to give away this week, and one of which is for the Craft All the Things new technique. Aww. So I'm, I'm trying to decide which should be which. You pick. Which should be which. Um, let's go with the... Um, one with the peach and the blue for this week, and the other can be the craft all the things. Okay. So the peach and blue one is Serenity Aww. on Strong Sock. When was it born? It was created on <laughs> six twenty one fifteen. Oh, I like that colorway. It is pretty, isn't it? It's, it's got um, like a teal and got blue. Peaches and teals, a dark blue, a sky blue. It's got some really cool depth to it. Her strong sock base is one of my favorites. Yeah. It's two ply, but it works really well for socks. It's 80% uh, superwash merino and 20% nylon. It's 400 yards. Um, 
Paula Emmons Feasley designed a shawlet out of her yarn, the um, Wild Goose, which I just finished. Mm -hmm. This will be perfect for that. So that is what we're giving away this week. Sarah has amazing yarn. So just go on over to her site. I will link it in the show notes and just tell us your favorite colorway or colorway series. Because and you can go back into her sold items. Um, oh, she's got them all like linked on her site. Oh, okay. All the color families. Okay. She, Cause she's amazing. She does collections like board games and how to train your dragon series. And she does lots of great colorways. She really, really does. And then the one that's going to be for the craft, all the things, this is business time. <laughs> now I've got and that flight of the Concord it's on her song. worsted, which is the best mm. base ever. So this is on the worsted. It's 200 yards, or 215 yards, excuse me. It's 100% superwash merino. I've knit hats out of this. I've knit baby sweaters out of this base some really it's one of my favorite bases that she does this and her Aaron I think are my absolute favorite um she is very very cool I just need to go ahead and link her stuff um she is on Etsy so you can find her there but her website really goes through all her um colors and just tell us your favorite color it's very, she's very, very cool. I'm just going to go ahead and link her colors so you can see. She does Lovable Puppets, which is the Muppets mm -hmm. in Sesame Street. Um, she does movie and TV, seasonal, tonal, variegated, video games and board games, yarn club colorways. And she just added um, the Rainbow Bright colorways, which would be under TV shows, I guess. But she is pretty awesome. Speaking of craft all the things we have a knit along craft along thing going on where you can craft whatever you want it just needs to be a new technique to you mm -hmm. there is um an epo thread now someone reminded me that i needed to start that <laughs> so i'm I so glad started. we have people that remind us i know seriously um that is always helpful um just a new technique just you tell us what technique that you put in you you use that was new to you you put a picture of your fo and that is it there's also a chatter thread you can see all the things that people are planning which is super cool that's our january 1st it's projects that have started january 1st and beyond and it goes all the way to uh march 31st so that is pretty cool and I'm enjoying it. And one of the things, <laughs> when I did the FO thread, like I made out the rules and the very bottom rule is narwhal narwhals need not apply. <laughs> Which I thought was hilarious. I cracked myself up. You're this is so what happens funny. when you get me after like eight hours of work. Yeah. Um, so that is going on now and we'll continue to go on. And we have at least... The another Crafty Girl prize, but we'll have tons of other Oh, yeah, we've got two more months to go. I'll probably pick something up at Vogue Noon Live. And... Oh, that'd be fun. Um, we do Patreon. It is how we support the podcast and mm -hmm. support some of our shenanigans. Yes. Like going to Oregon to look for new venues. Um, it so... also, we're looking at using those funds to support a new piece of software Ooh. that I would have to learn. Um <laughs> But that would allow us to do sort of a live web um, podcast where we could take questions or share links or promote people to presenters so people could ask, you know, use the video for questions or whatever. Yeah. Um, I think that I just need to bite the bullet and set a date for the first one because otherwise I'm just going to keep putting it off and putting it off. So when do you want to do it? Um, do you want to do it Martin Luther King Day or are you off Martin Luther King Day? Is that too soon? It's like in a week. It is in a week. I don't think it's too soon. Um, let's do it this week, though, because Michael's out of town okay. and I have time. Do you have school stuff after? I have a basketball game Thursday, but I'm free Friday night if you'd like to do it Friday night. Or I'm free tomorrow night. Let's Wednesday. do Friday night. Okay. Um, I have to pick Michael up from the airport, but not until super late. Okay, we'll put a time and place. We'll start a thread on the Ravelry group when we get it sorted out. How about mm -hmm. that? So people know that they can join us. Yes, and um, we can 
Yes, we'll do that. In the future, there's ways I can set up to like email or text remind people 15 minutes before or oh, whatever. Fun. So, um, but for the first one, it's going to be real bumpy. So if you expect it to be professional, <laughs> you should skip this first one. Um, but it'll be fun. Also, I'll be super tired because it'll be a Friday night yeah. after I was at basketball till 10 o'clock the night before. So mm, that's no good. It'll be interesting to say the least. I'll have lots of caffeine. For those, um, but. A genuine thank you for everybody that supports us oh, through yeah. Patreon, regardless of the, the value or frequency. Um, or we Jenny. also wanted to um, thank you. We've had a couple of people who have signed up to donate through PayPal and just do like monthly subscriptions, which is another great way to do it. Um, genuinely appreciate those people as well. And people who t go out of their way to purchase stuff through our Craftsy affiliate link mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Y'all are the sweetest. Yes. Thank you so much for all of that. And um, last little bit, if you are going to SSK, um, if you got in on the first round, um, initial lottery, then the second payment is due. Um, if you've had some emergency come up or what have you, email me, communicate with me, we will figure something out. But yep. um, the first payment, well, there was the deposit, then there's the first and the second payment. So um, the first payment is due i think the 15th which is this yep. week it's due now so it's due the 15th friday yes um paypal we accept if you um need to do it that way it's cheaper for us fee wise if you send us a check or a money order but we will accept whichever way works for you guys yep and that's all i got i think that's it for me there is a knit along going on for the ssk book which anyone is welcome to join in all the details for that are on the SSK board. I also went in, there were a couple questions that people were asking and under the announcement thread, I answered some of the frequently asked questions. So um, including the shuttle service links, um, if you wanna add days to either end of your stay for SSK, how to contact Garrett Bennett and do that. Mm -hmm. And um, kind of a brief outline day by day of what happens on each day. Right. So people can kind of plan ahead. And I think that's about it. Yep, me too. Awesome. I'm going to watch some more Gallivant and knit, maybe spin a little bit. Oh, I have wool washing too. I have some Romney that's sitting in water to be washed. I have to go and make dinner for my son. Mm, I had pizza. It was delicious. You know, out of every hundred words from my 12-year-old son, at least 40 of them are what's for dinner. <laughs> so... Yeah, he's, he's eating a lot. Growing. Yeah, that's what teenage boys do. They smell and then they grow. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they have smart mouths. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they don't have smart mouths. Those times are rarer than the times yes. that they do have smart mouths. <laughs> um, okay, that's it. You guys have a great week and we will talk to you um, if you're interested in joining us on Friday night for yeah. a general just chat and knit session. Then just watch yeah. the Knit Girls Ravelry board. Um, otherwise, we will see you next week. Awesome. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all.